In today's gospel passage, it continues from yesterday's gospel passage of the Good Shepherd, and Jesus goes on to describe the Good Shepherd and the relationship the shepherd has with the sheep and the response of that relationship as well. In John 10, 14, it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. I know my own and my own know me. But that cannot be seen by itself. That verse has to be seen in connection to what he says next. And that is when this verse actually becomes so significant and a big eye opener for us as well. I'm the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. So that is the comparison now. The com it's, it's not just a statement that says, I know my own, and my own know me. There's a comparison that Jesus brings. I know my own, and my own know me, just as... I know the Father and the Father knows me. Now in, in, biblical, in, in biblical terminologies and biblical uh, language, knowing has a far deeper significance than just coming to know a person. It's far more deeper. It's, it's on the level of intimacy, deep intimacy. At, at times in the Bible, when the word knowing is, is used, between human beings, there's sexual tonalities to it as well. But here it's, it's the, when the Lord has used the word know, it means a deep intimacy. My own know me. As much as I know the Father and the Father knows me, that is how much my own know me. And this, this might be a good measuring mark to see how much do I know God? Do I know Him as much as He claims me to know Him? When Jesus says, when the shepherd says, my sheep know me, do I know Him? Because if I don't, if I don't know Him the way He knows the Father and the Father knows Him, then maybe I don't belong to that flock. Or I'm presuming that I belong to that flock but I actually don't belong to the flock. I am there and yet I'm not. The other day I was in one of the online classes that uh, I'm doing for my studies and we were around six, six of us, seven of us and, uh, and the professor. And as she was explaining things, suddenly she asked us about, about something that was connected to, to the paper. And everyone was responding. And I didn't get the connection at all. So I'm sitting over there and I have no clue what she's actually saying. She's, she's speaking to each one and each one's uh, telling their idea of, of what, what paper they're doing. And I have no clue what paper she's talking about. The reality was there was an email that she had sent out before, which I had actually forgotten to read. And so I've lost the connection. I'm sitting over there. I'm in the meeting. I'm in the class. But I'm not in the class. I feel I'm in the class. So as she's, as she's asking everyone, because it is online and, and there's no physical, uh, physical presence, uh, I kept nodding my head like I did when I was in school as well. And, and you had no clue what the teacher was saying. And as she was speaking, I'm nodding my head, but in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I have no idea what she's saying. So am I in the class? I'm in the class. But am I in the class? I'm not in the class. Am I a part of the flock? I believe I am. Do I know the Lord? I don't. Then am I a part of the flock? I'm not. If the comparison is between Jesus and the Father, and that's the, that's the measuring mark he kept. He said, my flock know me as I know them, as I know the Father and the Father knows me. So do I know 
Do I know Jesus deep enough? Do I have that intimate relationship with the Lord? As much as the Lord knows me and the Lord knows the Father, do I have that knowledge? Do I have that experience of Jesus, that intimacy with the Lord? Because if I don't, I cannot bring down the benchmark. Because the Lord has placed the benchmark. If I, if I don't have that intimacy, somewhere I don't know the Lord. I'm not part of the flock. I'm presuming I'm part of the flock, but I'm actually not part of the flock. We read in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. So I have not known him if I am a person who follows the path of sin. That's why in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, Philippians 3 verse 10, St. Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ, not just not just presume that I'm a part of the flock. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death. So when St. Paul is speaking about knowing Christ and is telling us about knowing Christ, he says, this is a deep, intimate relationship. I want to know the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in death. And then he goes on in verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So that is the intimacy we are talking about. That is the kind of knowing that, that the scripture is talking about. When I am to become a part of the flock, there is meant to be a far, far deeper intimacy with Jesus. Or else I'm not a part of the flock. Or else I can never say that I'm the sheep that knows the voice of the shepherd. I don't. That's why in the book of Jeremiah 31 verse 33, it says, the Lord says, I will put my law within them. I will write it within their hearts. I will write it within their hearts and then that is when they will actually know me. It's, it's a good time for us to actually reflect and ask ourselves, do I actually know, as Jesus claims that I'm supposed to know as a sheep that belongs to the flock, do I actually know God? Or do I, do I follow the path of sin? Do I follow the path of unholiness and, and I presume that I'm part of it? Am I only presuming? Am I living in this bubble thinking to myself, I go to church, I, I pray, I say the rosary, I say the novenas, I, I, I'm a part of the online masses, I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm baptized, and so I'm a part of the flock? Is it so? Am I a part of the flock just because I come to church? Am I a part of the flock just because I know theology? Am I a part of the flock just because I'm a priest? Am I a part of the flock just because I have my spiritualities and my novenas and my, my prayers? I'm a part of the flock when I know the shepherd in intimacy, as St. Paul says, with a deep desire to be one with him. That can happen only with the presence of the Holy Spirit. That is why 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 I'm presuming, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us know Christ. No one can say Jesus is Lord. No one can have an intimacy with the Lord. No one can be a part of the flock in all genuineness and sincerity unless led by the Holy Spirit. And so today we pray, even as we are moving on that journey towards Pentecost, O oh Spirit of God, give me the grace to know Christ, to be a genuine part of the flock, not to presume that I am a part of it, but to know my Lord and Savior.
Let us pray for that grace and that great anointing that I want to be a part of the flock. I want to be with the Lord on this journey. I want to know him. Let that be our deepest desire and our deepest prayer. Let's close eyes for a moment. Lord, how much do I know you? I'm baptized. I pray. Come for Mass. I know a fair bit of my prayers and my theology. But Lord, if the measuring mark is your relationship with the Father, then Lord, can I be honest when I say I know you as much as you know the Father and the Father knows you? Very often, I honor thee with my lips, but my heart is far away from you. I haven't let your law be written in my heart. I haven't followed your way of the cross and embraced you in the sufferings of my life. Jesus, I pray that I might know you and be a part of the flock as much as you know the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.